Hello, my name is Podrick and I'd like to welcome you to our first live interview in this series of gaining an insight behind a particular subject with someone who works in that specialised field. Today I'm joined by Ben and Kirsty from an animal rights campaign group I'm sure you all know, PETA. I have an earpiece in my ear feeding from upstairs so if any of you guys have any questions you want to ask Ben or Kirsty today you can do so by commenting on the video feed, tweeting us at Truthloader or by leaving us a post on our Facebook Truthloader page. Thanks for coming along guys. Um, for those of you who don't know, could you tell us what PETA stands for and what the main aims and beliefs or of the organisation are today? Sure, well uh, PETA stands for People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Um, it was founded in America in the 80s. It's pronounced PETA as opposed to PETA, which is one of the most common questions I get. Um, our fundamental belief is that animals are not ours to eat, to wear, to experiment on, to use for entertainment or abuse in any other way. And that's been our guiding principle for over 30 years. In the UK, we're relatively new. We've only been around for 20 years, but we've grown into one of the largest animal rights organisations in the country. We have a very active uh, youth movement um, through social media with the biggest group on social media on Facebook and on Twitter um, and that's steered a lot of our campaigns. We now uh, d drive a lot of our traffic through the website, um, emails, targeting activists, getting very involved um, through their campaigns online and um, yeah things are exciting. There's been a real uh, change recently in terms of people's views of a attitudes towards animals. So how big a community is it are we talking here? Uh, well, we've got hundreds of thousands of members. Okay. Uh, in the US, our affiliates got over three million members and supporters worldwide, which makes them the largest animal rights organization in the world. Um, but in the UK, we're relatively fledging, but you know, we've had a lot of success for animals over the years. How, and how do you think you're seen by people in, in, in the world? I know myself growing up, uh, without not knowing a lot about PETA, I would have you know, people say, oh, you're the ones who throw paint at people who are wearing fur and stuff like that. Is, is that, that realistic? That hasn't happened in a long time. In the UK, we're a, a charity, and we'd simply lose our charitable status if we did anything silly like that. Mm. We're now using much more effective at using online marketing tools. Um, you know, the, the days of, of grassroots activism are over. It's now you're able to do far much more online and uh, with, you know, much more efficient use of efforts. What, what about funding? Funding, um, we, you know, we get funding like uh, the RSPCA and other animal charities mm. uh, just by people being kind enough to donate a portion of their, uh, their monthly salary uh, in wills. And, um, you know, we are we're a purely a funded organisation. We, um, we don't have any government sponsorship, for example, and that drives our work. And we're incredibly grateful to our fundraisers and our, and our charitable givers alike. OK, so today we have two or three subjects we're going to touch on. I believe, I'm not sure who has a specialised mm -hmm. field in what. One of you uh, has dog and bullfighting, am I right? That's me. OK, then we're going to take it with you, Kirsty. I'm going to start with that. Um, are there different levels to this dog and bullfighting? Well, I'll start with bullfighting first. Yeah. There aren't really different levels to bullfighting. The important thing to, to realise is that in every bullfight, every single bull that is forced to take part and is tortured is brutally slaughtered at the end of every single bullfight. In Spain, um, the bulls are, f are slaughtered in front of the crowd. So we want you to imagine what it must feel like for the bull to be forced into an arena to have swords plunged into his back and his neck and his body again and again until blood is literally pouring from his wounds. He's absolutely terrified. He's in excruciating pain. He doesn't want to die, but he can't run away. And soon he can't even stand up. Once he's fallen to the floor from sheer exhaustion and massive blood loss, he can only watch and wait as a knife rips through his spinal cord with the aim of killing him. And that is the experience of thousands of bulls every year in Spain. In Portugal, the same level of violence is inflicted on the bull in every bullfight, but they don't kill the bull in front of the crowd. Instead, they drag the bull from the ring and leave him bleeding to be slaughtered hours, sometimes days later. With dogfighting, you could loosely put it into three different categories, but the important thing to, to know is that no matter what category you choose to put it in, all dogfighting is incredibly cruel, violent and illegal. So you've got street fights, they're people generally unorganised, people who meet on the street corner somewhere, sometimes associated with gangs. You've then got people who do dogfighting, they see it as a hobby, mm. incredible I know, but um, these are more 
organise, generally plan fights in, a, in advance, and they train their dogs to be as violent and as aggressive as possible. You've then finally got professional dog fighters who often have a lot of animals all at once, sometimes more than 50 that they've got, and they're training them. And these people make money from selling, from breeding, from selling, and from fighting dogs. So there's a black market then, essentially? Absolutely. It's all underground because it is illegal in this country. Uh, but how much money are we talking here, roughly? Wow. Um, I'm, I'm guessing huge numbers there. I mean, mm. it's all underground illegal gambling, so it would be very hard to put a finger on the exact sum. But when these places are raided, it's often found with other things such as guns, drugs, and yeah, illegal gambling, as I mentioned. Um, it, I'm not sure. Is there a penalty? You know, how, how does Peter step in with in terms of the law? Mm -hmm. Are you contacted afterwards, or do you do you ever get approached, tip offs, that kind of type of thing? Does that happen? Yeah, there's a lot of cruelty cases around there, and we see incidents of dogs who have been mutilated or have been abused in many ways. Peter sometimes. When we're able to, we do step in and offer rewards to find people and to bring them to justice. Um, that's something we do quite often. And you've also got, of course, the RSPCA who are working to shut down these rings and often do raids on properties and find these illegal dogfighting rings and try and shut them down. Okay. Um, the only thing that's just saying to me here is that we just have to speak a little louder because this is a massive room. I don't sure. know if, everyone, <laughs> if that's okay with you. So who is involved in organising these act type of activities, mm -hmm. though? I know you, and is it, you know... Especially in the UK, I think that's where, where your interests lie. Mm -hmm. Well, with dog fighting, it is, you can only say that it is cowards that pit one dog against another for entertainment or for profit. And the only way to stop that from happening is by uh, introducing anti-breeding uh, legislation and through sterilisation efforts. So we're talking spaying and neutering dogs instead of breeding them to be used for entertainment and then thrown away when they're no longer worthwhile. And one other point as well, undercover investigations have shown that children are often um, taking, not taking part, but they're often involved mm. watching as spectators these dog fights. And that can often lead to um, insensitivity towards animals and enthusiasm for violence. Just going back to bullfighting, the UN this year declared bullfighting to be against the Treaty on the Rights of the Child. That is the most ratified treaty in the history of the world. And they declared bullfighting to be against the human rights of the child because of the extreme violence involved. And the same can be said for dogfighting. With bullfighting, of course, it doesn't take part in the UK. It has been banned in this country. But uh, again, you've got... In every bullfight you have men who come in on horses, we're talking multiple people who stab the bull with their swords, mm. then more men come in on foot and stab him with banderillas, their harpoon-like points at the end. He loses a lot of blood, he's completely exhausted, and finally when he's about to die, the matador is called in, and it's his job to attempt to kill the animal, although he's already lying on the floor. If he fails to and only further mutilates the animal, then another person comes in, the executioner, and attempts to finish the job. So it's a lot of people on one animal, and they're the people involved. You mentioned extreme violence and the UN there. Is, in terms of popular culture, movies and TV programmes, we see this type of bullfighting going on in Spain. Is, have, I'm not sure if you approached the movie directors or producers. Is that something that has been done, or do they just continue to ignore this? Well, you, you've got movies and people who do that, but there, you've also got a lot of people who are against bullfighting. The opposition to bullfighting in Spain, as well as in every other country, is already vast and is mounting all the time. There was a recent poll that showed that 76 of Spaniards are not even interested in bullfighting. Whether movies choose to take that on board or not, the truth is they're against bullfighting. And the numbers go up even higher for younger people, the younger generation, so the people we've got coming forward now. they are no interest in bullfighting, they actively take part in demonstrations and campaigns against it. And the important point to note is that bullfighting in Spain, in all other countries, could not continue without the subsidies they receive from the EU. So taxpayers like you and I are effectively funding bullfighting in Spain because they receive EU subsidies and tourism of course. Most of the people who go to witness a bullfight 
are tourists who have no idea about the level of violence they are about to watch. Most of them come away completely shocked, completely disgusted and saddened about how long they've watched this animal be stabbed to death and to die, and most ne vow never to return. And we would, of course, say, just simply never attend a bullfight. Don't give your money to this industry that is dying anyway. It's tourists that are propping it up. Take your money elsewhere and spend it on other things to do in Spain. Okay, and in terms of, you know, what, what's this? In terms of bullfighting, what's the solution? Um, how I know it's like how long is a piece of string? There mm -hmm. was gladiators two thousand years ago, and that you know that doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. How how quickly do you think we, there can be a turnaround to prevent this from happening? Yeah. Bullfighting is on its last legs. It is a dying industry. The support for it is d declining dramatically. If you look at any bullfight, they can't sell the tickets. No one wants to attend these things anymore. And as I just mentioned, the only reason that it's still happening is because of the subsidies they receive and the tourists. So don't attend a bullfight as a tourist, for one. Um, and then no one will be going to them anymore. And also, we will continue to fight these subsidies that they receive both from the Spanish government and also from the EU. Um, you can do so by visiting our website, peter.org.uk. We've got an action on there that people can do to write to the EU and demand that they stop these subsidies now. In terms of how quickly, um, it, is, it is very hard to say, as you said, but um, within my lifetime, I would hope. OK, then, and going back to dog fighting, um, what types of dogs are used and why are these dogs used in particular? Mm -hmm. Well, if you visit any animal shelter like Battersea Dogs and Cats Home, you will see wall-to-wall -wall pit bulls, pit bull type dogs and Staffordshire Terriers. These are generally the, do the dogs that are used for dog fighting because their breeds are strong, they're easy to get hold of, and yet yeah, they then train them to be even more aggressive and violent for the dog fights. Um, the only way to stop this suffering and misery is to make sure that these animals are not bred for the sole purpose of being abused for entertainment and then thrown away when they're no longer worthwhile. And that again is through spaying and neutering animals instead of breeding them. When, if you want to have a dog, go and get one from the rescue center. Don't, buy, don't pay for a breeder who has probably bred lots of dogs for this for money instead yet yeah, rescue a dog and that, that's the only way to stop this cruelty from happening. And if you were to get a tip off um, from the RSPCA, um, mm -hmm. do you work closely with them or yeah, how does that work? Mm -hmm. Well we do work closely with the RSPCA but they're the people generally on the ground. They have the power to go and actually go into these people's houses or ask to go in there and see these animals. We do sometimes get tip-offs. If possible, we contact our local activists and ask them to go and check on these dogs. There was a dog, for example, a Staffordshire Bull Terrier it was, last week we received a tip-off that he was living in squalid conditions in Bolton, in Manchester. And we got in touch with our activists in the area. Three of them kindly stepped forward to go around and check on the dog. Luckily, we found after the owners had received a letter from Peter and from the RSPCA that they'd cleaned up the dog's area and he was now living more comfortably. So we do what we can and if we can work with the SPCA, we will. And is there a percentage of dogs who may be involved in bullfighting and they get taken away from their owners who, what happens to them? Do, they, do the dogs get destroyed or are they rehomed or is that, is that possible? Well often these dogs that are trained for dog fighting have been, they've not led a normal life, they're completely desensitized to human affection, they've been made as aggressive as possible. Sometimes after being kept in cages and on chains their entire lives, they just go insane. I mean that is not a life to live. Unfortunately most of these animals, many of them, cannot be rehomed simply because one, there are not enough homes to begin with, but two, because yeah, they are an aggressive animal and putting them with humans is no longer safe. Sadly, lots of them do have to be put to sleep Sometimes this is the best, the only way that you can help these animals and put them out of their suffering. If they can be rehomed, that's great, and yet we support rehoming and adopting when possible. So if there was a fight on the street today, what would happen to the losing dog and the winning dog mm -hmm. afterwards? Are they glorified? Is, you know, does one dog get savagely beaten and brutally attacked? What, what happens? Is the dog left there? Mm -hmm. 
Well, it's very hard to say that any dog in a dog fight can be declared a winner. Um, all of them become incredibly injured and suffer horrendous pain. Yeah. Those who are declared the winner on the day are often forced to take part in more dog fights. Don't forget as well, they will have been injured during the fight. They're probably bleeding. And I mean, Peter has seen dogs who have taken part in dog fights who are absolutely mangled. They're completely covered in blood. Uh, they're covered in urine and saliva from fighting each other. And you see some that have been rescued afterwards and they're covered in scar tissue because their life is simply fighting with other animals. Those dogs who lose the fight, they're probably near to death anyway. The owners often either put them out of their misery because one, they've probably been humiliated by their loss um, and they're not worth anything to them anymore. They can't fight again. So we have heard reports and seen animals that have been disposed of in the most horrendous ways. So you're talking, they've been set on fire, they've been shot, um, left to starve, are simply thrown out with the trash because they're not worth anything anymore. And it's incredibly sad. God, I, I don't see any of that in the streets myself. But, and then in terms of these dogs' recovery, if, do, would the owner take them to a vet? Is, is, would the vet uh, then, is his legal responsibility to contact someone like yourselves or the RSPCA or mm -hmm. do they just treat them privately? I mean, how does that work? Well, if the dog is lucky enough to be taken to a vet, uh, then if the vet suspected that it was involved in some kind of dog fighting ring, I would hope that he would contact the police and the RSPCA. Unfortunately, a lot of the times these dogs are not taken to the vet. That costs money. And as we know, dog fighting is about money. A lot of it is profit driven. Um, you could say it's about entertainment, but a lot of them do make some money on this and the illegal gambling involved as well. Taking these dogs that are probably not worth anything anymore, they're not going to be able to get a fight out of them to the vet is an extra expense. It's much easier for them to leave them out on the streets to die and for animal rehoming charities to pick them up, sadly. And how prevalent is, I know you mentioned in the UK, is dog fighting worldwide? Yeah, well, it's actually obviously illegal in the UK. Mm. It does still take place in countries around the world, such as parts of Russia and Japan. And although it is legal in the UK and other countries um, like Canada and uh, Italy, for example, it still does take place. So the US has a big problem with dog fighting. It's a felony offence in all 50 states but the underground dog fighting rings and the illegal gambling that goes along with it is a huge problem. And if you look at any animal shelter, the amount of pit bull terriers and staffordshires that are in there, it is clear to see the extent of this problem.